You know, in higher education, projects surround us all the time. Whether we're working on a special issue of a journal like Educational Leadership, we're creating a new conference like Global Learn, or maybe writing a book, our 20th or 22nd book. If not a book, maybe a podcast of that book so people can listen to our respective books that we write. We're always doing projects. Well, how about getting your students in this project mode? What can you do for them to prepare them for the world of projects and problems and processes and all these P words that are out there? So we're going to talk about coordinating online projects, problems, and product-based learning. The PBL of life, if you will. Right? The rationale is ownership over learning. Just like the hands-on video pod that we did. Ownership of learning, autonomy, choice, constructing knowledge. Teachers are a guide in this process, and the goals are set out there somewhere beyond where they are today, uh, striving to reach that end point, if you will. So the rationale is one of a sense of purpose as a learner, as someone who has a sense of say over his or her learning path. John Dewey, Evan Illich, John Sealy Brown, Stephen Hippel, all these folks in the sphere of education and technology and psychology and philosophy have been talking about this for decades, if not centuries. Get students curious about something. Investigate knowledge based on their own personal interests, whether it's John Dewey, author of How We Think and Democracy in Education, focused on projects and having kids build products and active learning. Even Illich, talking about de-schooling society and getting people out in the real world, collecting real world data in the webs of learning that are possible out there and maybe getting expert feedback. Or Stephen Hippel, a co-developer of Not School in the Outro Lab in the UK, who focuses on multimedia and exciting kids through uh, technologies for learning. The same with John Sealy Brown, authors of the books uh, Minds on Fire and the Social Life of Information, as well as, um, of course, we get into Seymour Papert's work, Mindstorms, previous to that. Because many people have been talking about active learning and constructivistic kinds of learning out there and project-based and problem-based forms of learning. John Silly Brown, and Stephen Hippel, and John Dewey, and even those just a few of the people out there talking about it. Because the pros are so extensive, whether we're talking about satisfaction about learning, whether we're talking about focusing on higher-order thinking skills, such as evaluation skills, such as synthesis skills, uh, analysis skills, and then the regulation of one's own learning, the metacognitive components, where we learn how to meta-monitor our development process, our projects, and then maybe reflect on the results at the end. So we're moving towards real-world situations to prepare us for that employment in the real world. Of course, there are many problems in something like this, of the time in particular, the uh, degree of handholding or advice or guidelines and scaffolding. These are all issues, right? And, you know, conducting problem-based learning is fuzzy. It's not clear-cut. Students don't know everything about it. You want to state the problem, but monitor the steps, celebrate completion, archive what happened, introduce what's going on. but. Now, there's so many aspects here. And then, of course, you got to think about what the final project or product will be. Is it a wiki book? Is it a journal article? Is it a book that your students are designing to share with someone? A commissioned report for a client out there? If it's in photo media, is it a product gallery or a gallery tour? Will we put that work up in an archive for others to see and comment on and rate and discuss? And how will we assign points to it? Who will assign the points? Will it be the students themselves or the instructors? Now, there's a great portal on PBL from the University of Delaware you might explore on um, problem-based learning. It's also excellent resources from the George Lucas Education Foundation, or GLEF. Uh, you can go to the Edutopia website and get a series of videos about project-based learning in K-12 schools if you're interested. Of course, educators have talked about this for a long time, the movement towards learner-centered, movement towards constructivistic, Environments that are motivational, engaging, that build self-esteem of students. But there are many things in the path that might bump you out of a project-based learning, out of a successful one, anyhow.
You have to think about tasks, task length, resources, skills, and in particular, that driving question. What's the big question we're all moving towards? What is the goal? Once you capture that, once you capture the enthusiasm, once you capture their excitement and engagement, then everything might be downhill after that. Whether we're developing digital storytelling or digital movies like the website Educational Uses of Digital Storytelling from the University of Houston, my friend Bernard Robin, or having students post romantic poetry and hyperlink it together from poets, or creating YouTube videos as class assignments. There are a number of examples of project-based learning on the internet, such as digital storytelling, online poetry, and sonnets. Uh, Alexandra Juhazi's class where YouTube became the whole class. It wasn't totally successful, but it was an experiment anyhow. Whether we're talking in higher education settings or corporate ones. Deloitte had an annual film festival where employees got to talk about why they work at Deloitte that they eventually used as recruitment videos, retention videos. It got thousands of employees across the company, across the world, excited about working there. So it's not just about higher education settings or K-12 settings. But online videos could be a final semester project where students present their work, their summary of what they've gained from the class in that encapsulating three minute, five minute, 10 minute video clip. Much advice here about PBL. You can read about in the, in the literature uh, there are many people who have written about PBL, including one of my former students, John Savory. Read articles on problem-based learning. Check out PBL portals and videos. I mean, go to YouTube and just type in PBL. Go to TeacherTube. Uh, there are many examples out there that you can find of people doing it, so you can start to think about what you could do. Talk to experts about what they're doing in their classrooms. Talk to other colleagues. Find models of problem-based learning or maybe create one that's successful for you. And then explain that process to your students. Explain how they're going to work together as teams. Explain the goal that they have, that driving question, that purpose. Um, encourage them, in fact, to not just produce something for the class, but to share it beyond the class. To get to that point, though, you need a series of scaffolds. You need a series of job aids or think sheets to get them through this process. And when they're done, you need to think about how they will present what they've learned. Is it an online competition, a symposia, press conference? Will you invite experts in from the outside to evaluate, analyze, give feedbacks on what they've done? Will you create a best products tour that keeps getting uh, more enhanced each every time you teach that class? Will your standards keep going up and up and up as a result of this? So will you create a, a website or a gallery tour for future students with maybe testimonials wrapped around over the top of that so as to reduce the tension of students walking in next time? The whole series of things that you need to consider in developing online uh, courses with projects, problem-based learning, uh, whatever it is that you're focused on. There's also a number of tools out there to help students collect their work, such as scrap uh, blog and other websites like that. So my advice really is to find something that you feel comfortable with, create some scaffolds or some step-by-step -step expectations, guidelines, because you are a concierge as an online instructor. There's no doubt about it. We've moved from being direct instructors to being coaches, facilitators, moderators, but really it's one of concierge finding the resources, making them available, and put it, pushing them out for students to use when they want to, when they want to tap into that resource. So think hard, think deeply, and maybe have your students advise you in the end about what actually worked during the semester, what didn't work, and how you might change things around next time. Whether it's projects, whether it's problems, whether it's products, I will say, you will get your students excited at some point along the way. They might get frustrated, they might complain, but you will have some success, or so I hope. Good luck coordinating those PBL projects on the web.